Looking to the problem of respiratory disease in Europe, we know that the uh, burden of disease is very important and the cost is very high, about 400 billion of euros each year. In a view of the future of the population in Europe, having this aging population, the burden of respiratory disease will increase, and with the increase of the burden will increase the costs. The main problem we're left with, of course, is the non-communicable diseases, such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchial asthma, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis. These are the chronic diseases, which of course do have acute exacerbations, so they're not just chronic, and the impact of that on our secondary care sector is, is high. And in terms of stakeholders, therefore, the healthcare providers are confronted with these diseases, whether in primary health care or in secondary health care, which really creates a huge expense for our governments around the world and yet we can offer them relatively little in terms of new ways of dealing with this. And that's something that needs tackling, not only in terms of scientific discovery, but the way we deliver health care more generally. If you look to what we spend treating the patient, it's about 40 euros per inhabitant in Europe. If you look to what we spend for tobacco and alcohol, we spend around 800 euros per year. This means 20 times in terms of money. There are many key challenges, but if I were to select one um, overriding challenge, it's our understanding of disease, or rather our lack of understanding of disease. And particularly how, um, when we uh, describe a disease, it varies so much between patients. So that m most disease is not homogenous, and we don't understand why that is. We want to have the best basic research. We, have, we want to have the best translation of research, but at the end of the day we must take a decision at the end of this process. And the decision at the end of this process must be having all the people that are involved around the table and, and discussing in be between them and trying to find out the best solution. I think one of the points of the, of the summit was that we put around the table all the people that are involved in healthcare. The collaboration between these stakeholders will lead to a, a better uh, uh, management of, of the disease. We've gone through this biological revolution of picking things apart and not actually thinking about the whole integrated organism. And of course now we're stuck with the situation of knowing a lot about molecules but not knowing how they're all put together and how they perform either within an organ or within an intact human being. So it's the integration of science where the funding is needed and this is where Europe has a major role to play here. We need a mechanism that can bring everybody together, pool their resource, pool their ideas and together in a collaborative um, way actually begin to address these, these key problems that, that we face. And that's the, the driver behind setting up something like um, the Innovative Medicines Initiative. It's a public-private partnership to try and tackle these key challenges within drug development. Now the question is, will there be enough research funds available for all of that, for this collaborative research? And the answer is that we need to realize in Europe specifically that we are in competition with the world. And as the world is evolving, I mean, everybody knows the BRIC countries. Uh, that's where actually there are huge populations and there is economic growth, whereas in Europe there is not really economic growth. So therefore, there's a lot of pressure on investments. Um, and so we need to have the debate there on how collaborative research can also make sure and ensure that the research funds come to that collaboration. So not just focusing on one area, but trying to bring, you know, technology providers, IT providers, diagnostic companies, pharmaceutical companies, patients, academics, all will have to be brought together if we're going to have this revolution um, that we need within um, our, our healthcare systems. If we then looked at where innovations come from, often they start at academia. 
that's where the real researchers are, where then they cannot develop those, therefore they need the industry. And so the collaborative effort actually needs to be focused on creating innovation where it is created and then developing it because ultimately the ambition is to bring it to the patient. We've been brilliant at suppressing disease for the last hundred years with steroids and other drugs that we use, but not terribly good at curing them. So I think this new way of thinking about the networks driving complex human diseases will lead us closer to the origins of disease and therefore to drugs and other agents that will intervene more effectively in creating cure. And I think one important thing about innovation is that it's risky and quite a lot of industries and quite a lot of organisations don't like risk. So we need a platform or we need a way of doing things that shares that risk. And if you share that risk, you have more chance of generating innovation. If you look to the EU programs, now they are moving from a disease uh, approach to a cross-disciplinary approach to the patient. And this is one of, of the main points also of innovation or research in terms of changing the target of, of, the, of the research. So it's not just new techniques, it's just in a, a new mode of action. Healthcare is undergoing a revolution, uh, whereas previously it was very driven by doctors and healthcare professionals, the so-called medical model. Now we're moving away from that because patients are becoming much more informed about their own disease than they ever were previously due to the internet and other ways of gaining information. And of course, we've got different ways of approaching the delivery of healthcare involving not just doctors, but a variety of uh, healthcare and other forms of practitioner. So I think the movement of the patient towards guiding us about what they want is part of this personalised medicine initiative, really. I mean, it's putting the European citizen at the heart of what we should be doing, rather than treating whole populations as if we were transgenic mice. We're not. We're all diverse. We all live in a different world. The problem was, and is, that uh, all the treatment we used are designed to fit all the patient in the same treatment. We had to choose the right drug for the right patient. And the research must go in this way, going to identify the treatment that works for the single patient. Patients are absolutely the most important element of that collaborative research because in the end it's to find treatments for their unmet medical need or to add value to the, to the current treatment and, and, and improve it. The challenge is as early as possible to involve them in the discussion because sometimes we discover too late that the need of the patient is different from what was found in the labs. If we're trying to engage patients in research, we all have to start thinking differently. Um, it's all very well uh, talking about patient and public involvement, but patients have to be prepared for this, the healthcare systems have to be prepared for it, and the professionals themselves and the researchers. So the community really has to think very differently because a lot of research in the past has been led very much by academic um, departments, um, perhaps some personal interest in that, but together setting those priorities is one of the most important things. We should help those patient organisations or representatives um, to know also what is expected. So the more professional a patient organisation is, the better the input is actually, or the output is, and the collaboration is. We see countries and we see efforts where regulators or governments in those tables where they take the decision involve patients but this is not yet the common practice across, so that's absolutely something which is very important to put there the patient first. And healthcare professionals themselves are going to have to start to think differently of how they interact with patients, because if you have a long-term condition, then actually the patient themselves is the expert, and not necessarily the, the, the physician or the nurse that they're seeing. And, and that will take quite a, a fundamental shift in the power base between patients and their healthcare professional. A good question to ask is, what have been the big discoveries in medicine over the last 100 years? And you can come up with all sorts of things, including the discovery of DNA uh, by Watson and Crick in the 1950s. But is that really delivering for patient benefit? Not yet. And I think one of the great discoveries has been, in fact, 
vaccines, the ability to be able to administer agents to human beings to prevent human disease from happening. And one could follow that up by saying the huge public health efforts to look at, for example, reducing air pollution. These are the ways to influence disease, not just targeting the medical aspects of them. Concerning the risk factor, we know very well that smoking is one of the main risk factors, not only for rest of the disease, for cardiovascular disease, for diabetes, for cancer, for everything. Now, thank also to the ERS working at the EU level, we obtain a uh, declaration from the EU Commission uh, against smoking and uh, a new uh, way to combat the, 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 uh, the use of cigarettes, plain packaging, uh, uh, prohibiting the, the use of, of, uh, of cigarettes in a uh, uh, public area and so on. So indeed we are working on, on risk factors. And I think at the end of the day it costs a little and we have a great result. It's about finding the right therapy for the right person at the right time, at the right cost. That is what we should be trying to achieve. And if we do this effectively and we seriously cure people as opposed to suppressing disease, then health costs will come down. We will be able to deliver a health service, not necessarily in the secondary and tertiary sector, but in the primary care sector, providing the companion diagnostics are there and the fluidity of referral remains intact and that we do have specialist centres able to provide the sort of interrogation of complex disease that we now need, such as the new imaging techniques that are now available. We do need to be thinking about concentrating on um, big cases, you know, big impact. So um, the the research and the cost of that at the immediate point actually um, may be one thing, but it's the bigger impact along the line, the cost savings along the line of actually having the right intervention at the right time. Too much wastage happens in the process, so if we can get that right earlier, then there will be cost savings in the system. We do have the same objective between academia, researchers, the industry, patient organization and the regulators and the government, which is bring a, a good health care to the patients because a healthy patient or a healthy person is much more worth for a healthy economy. And that's, by the way, the agenda of FPA going forward, health and growth, because it's through this collaborative effort that we can ensure that the engine of growth is a healthy economy and healthy people. And we're beginning to see uh, documents and concept papers come from some of our projects that could fashion and shape regulatory guidance in the future. So we're still in the early stages, but we are seeing the, the first steps and the first results coming out of the projects, which indicate that, yes, the projects are having an effect and it bodes well for the future. I think that the, uh, the approach now we have in terms of controlling risk factors, look into new way to translate basic research to the, uh, to the clinical background, at the end of the day is very positive. So I see in the future the idea also of a cross-disciplinary approach to the disease being the, the key for having a better outcome in terms of healthcare. care.